Hi everyone, you have these Chronicles of the Gray Hair Diva. If this is your first time, welcome. If not, welcome back. For all of you out there, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. Hit the like button, chat with me in the comments, and when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. Share my video with your friends and family so that they can come to my channel and get to know me also. I'm here today with a video on Diddy, P. Diddy, Puffy, Brother Love, or Diddy, which one is it? Well, on his Instagram, he is listed as Diddy, but remember in 2020, he changed his name to Brother Love, and he said he will not be going by any of those previous names, he will not answer to it, and then I guess he came to his senses and he went back to using Diddy. Well, anyway, this past holiday weekend, July 4th, it sparked a lot of people to post some inspirational videos, and Diddy was amongst the group. So Diddy posts from his home, um, he's in his backyard, and if Infinity Pool is the backdrop, which is absolutely gorgeous, and he's eating a fresh mango and living his best life. And he just wanted us all to know that, you know, he's not a chosen one. And I'm paraphrasing his words, that he's saying you too, meaning anybody watching his video, you can have this life too if you wanted it. If you worked for it, you worked hard, you stayed the course, you can have this life. So he pretty much gave a little bit of words in the actual video. And then underneath the video, he posted that his motivation for making sure he worked hard his whole life, I guess sometime when he was younger, one day he was asleep, he woke up out of his sleep, and it was not one, not two, not five, but 15, 15 roaches on his face. These are his words, not mine. I'm not making this up, people. He said 15 roaches on his face. And that's what motivated him. That's what sparked him into action at such a young age. He said he had paper routes. He started very young working. And that is why he is where he is today. But those roaches motivated him and sparked him because he was like, heck no, I will not live like this. I will not live in poverty. Well, there's some people that was commenting him and thanking him for his motivational speech. There was others that pretty much wrote underneath in the comments, liar. Is Diddy telling the truth? I would never know. Um, but, you know, let's thank him for his motivational word and his inspiration, you know, coming to us to say, you know, work hard so we can get to where he's at also. So anyway, I think some people might have questioned the 15 roaches and him being able to count them and them being on his face. Um, I would say probably because I'm thinking when you move, the roaches would have moved. I don't know. Or when you did you pluck them off your face and count them or when you move they moved and then you went one two three four five and fifteen i i don't know but either way he told us his story and those roaches motivated him to do more so now we got motivational roaches well i'm gonna say we got motivational roaches we're gonna need to collect some and use them for some of the people out in the world why am I saying that? Because during the pandemic, COVID-19, the government, they didn't know what to do. So they decided to start giving stimulus checks to all of those that were unemployed as a result of the pandemic to help them so they wouldn't fall under. They'd be able to still pay their bills, eat some food, so forth and so on. And since then, they have been giving different type of stimulus checks to help people stay afloat. Well, as a result of these stimulus checks, not all, but some people made more money during the pandemic staying home receiving those stimulus checks than they made when they physically went to work and did 40, 60, or 70 hours. So therefore, as the world started to recover and open back up, there were tons, and I mean tons, tons of jobs out there for people to get and have. However, people are not pressed for several different reasons to go back to work. They're not motivated. They're not inspired, okay? And as a result, you know, it's a trickle effect because other things are happening. Have you noticed that some of your local supermarkets, um, for me, my lo local Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, restaurants, they're all saying that they don't have supplies 
Well, they don't have supplies because people are not going back to work. And some of those people are a lot of the truck drivers. Well, how are we going to get these goods back and forth to supermarkets and different stores? We need workers. So maybe they need to go collect some roaches, um, um, send it to these different people's house, put them on their leg, their face or something, and motivate them to get back into action. So we want to thank Diddy, okay, Puffy, Brother Love, for this motivational speech that he put on his Instagram. Perhaps it can help us solve what is going on in the world right now with all of those that do not want to go back to work. So anyway, let's move on. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Diddy and this situation. Let's move on to the next story, which um, it, it is sad, but it is one of those situations that is like it's never going to end. I think even if they get a divorce, it still won't end. And that's Erica Mena and Safari. Erica Mena and Safari probably should have never got married in the first place, but they did. They seem to think that social media is their therapist, their mediator, their way of solving the many problems that they currently have going on in their relationship. It seems like instead of them talking to each other, they talk at each other with posts in their social media anytime they're having a problem. And I mean any. So their most recent thing again happened over the holiday weekend. And I will say this before I get into um, Erica Mena's most recent rant and post. I will say this. She pulled at my heartstrings a little bit. I watched the first episode of this season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. When I watched the episode, if any of you watched it, let me know in the comments. My heart did break for her. Safari is 40. Erica Mena is 33. And Safari seems to be the most immature 40-year-old I've ever seen in my life. First of all, he was in the scene with one of the other cast members talking about he didn't realize marriage was going to be this hard and that, you know, raising kids, so forth and so on. Well, you know what, um, Safari, shame on you. You should have Googled and looked up some stuff and thought about, you know, the kids and the marriage and all of this before you got into it because you went into a ready-made family. Erica Mena already had a son when you asked her to be your wife. And now you want to talk about the difficulty and things change and so forth and so on. He's such a kid. He's so petty. He also in that scene said he pretty much want to do him. How do you ask someone to be your wife and you want to do you? You just want to be free. You should have stayed free. You should have never married her. But we got to carry you on because they get, they get married and they have two children together. Okay, They have a daughter. They have a son. And the son was recently born. He was born early. And the son um, was in the NICU for a while. So Erica Mena, she goes to the social media because I guess she got word because um, Safari never came home for the weekend or whatever. She got word or in her head that she thought this, I want to say her name is Kaylin Garcia, um, was with her man, her husband, Safari, and not only just with him, but having relations with him, okay? So this is what Erica Mena thought or felt or whatever the case may be. So instead of calling her husband, talking to her husband and trying to resolve their issues, she goes to social media and she comes at this female. Okay, which to me in my mind, no one should ever, ever, ever do your argument, your um, grievance is not with the other woman. If there is a, another woman, it's with your man. It's with the one that stood before you in the eyes of God and said, he, I do. OK, it's not with this other woman. But anyway, let's carry on. She goes to her social media. She tags this other woman. And I'm going to paraphrase. She pretty much says that, listen, you, you, you with a married man. OK, you with a married man who has children and he has one of his children um, is, you know, just recently born, just came from the Nick. You haven't seen him in four days or whatever amount of days she said he hasn't seen his son. And she pretty much he should be here with us. But instead, he's with you and shame on you, knowing that he's married and you're being with him and blah, 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 blah. The girl responds back and says, usually and again, I'm going to paraphrase. I don't get in the duck gutter with this social media stuff. OK, but she said for you, I'm going to respond. Me and Safari are friends and nothing more and nothing happened and good night and goodbye. 
Okay, other people got into this whole, you know, debacle with them and started commenting too. And um, Erica Mena was pissed. But here's the thing. It's social media. If you're going to put your business out in the public eye, then expect people, strangers, and all of the um, above and around to get in and to go into this particular conversation. And that's what they did. Erica was pissed, but you know what? You did it to yourself. Stop putting all your business on the social media sites. Stop trying to resolve your issues through social media. She also wrote in that post that, you know, now because of you, you know, this man has lost his whole family. Uh, he didn't want his family. It doesn't matter if it was this girl, that girl, another girl, or no girl. He didn't want his family. He's immature. He's been showing this um, since almost the onset of y'all being together. I feel bad for you, Erica, but unfortunately, you got to move on and carry on. So that's the Erica Mena and Safari saga. Unfortunately, if you watch Love Hip Hop Atlanta, I'm sure we're going to see more of the drama as the episodes continue on for this particular season. I will stay watching and let you know um, what I see when I see it. So we're going to move on to my last story. And the last story is, I want to say her name is Kim Richards from, um, used to be on, well, she, I think she's back on a little bit now, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, okay? Um, famous sisters, one of her famous sisters is Kyle Richards, and Kyle Richards has been on there for a long time. Her husband um, has, you know, a ton of money. And when Kim Richards was originally on the show, because she got kicked off for some time, when she was originally on the show, Kyle will always allude to the fact how her and her husband had to take care of Kim, okay? Um, bailed her out, pretty much gave her a place to live, and was always giving her money. So recently, Kim Richards has been in the news that she owes the IRS 90 grand. And not only that, you know, she's living in a very modest apartment, considering that both her sisters and her family has cash. But unfortunately, because of Kim Rich's addictions, um, she is in this place right now. And then I'm going to add Chet Hanks, and he is the son to Tom Hanks, okay? He recently was pissed off. And I think he's in his 30s, um, or he might just have turned 30 because his parents cut him off. Okay, so my question to you is, at what point, even if you do have the money, do we cut grown folk off? Should Kim and um, um, Kyle Richards um, help her sister Kim? Should she pay off this $90,000 um, IRS debt? Should she move her out of this modest apartment and buy her a nice home in Beverly Hills and L.A.? Um, or should she just let her be what it is? Because at some point, grown people have to be responsible for themselves. Chad Hanks, um, your father is Tom Hanks. That's a lot to try to live up to, but you should have never tried to live up to it. You just should have tried to be you. But unfortunately, Chet Hanks also de deals with a lot of addictions. And finally, I guess the parents said enough. So when should we cut people off? When is enough enough? Is Tom Hanks and his wife right for cutting off their son, Chet? And is Kyle Richards right for not paying her sister Kim um, Richard's IRS bill, and it's probably a little drop in the bucket for um, Kyle to do it. So you let me know. Thanks for listening. Chat with me in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.